This is Spooky Fee. You see him? He's just clutching my hand because he doesn't want me to go. Yeah. Because his um, older brother, Loki, just passed away. And uh, he's curling up in my bed and he's just grabbing my hands because apparently I had to bury it. Um, I had to bury the other cat, Loki, and um, yeah, well, I had to touch him, of course, like I always do with my pets, because I'm the only one in charge of not grieving, and the only one in charge of, you know, burying them, um, so I guess I might still have the scent of Loki, and uh, little Pookie Fee just doesn't want to let me go. Here you go, babe. Here you go. <laughs> he's, he's clutching me stronger and stronger each time. Doesn't like me to talk. What do you want? What do you want? I'll, I'll take out my hand. No? No? You want to rest there? Okay, babe. You're going to be okay. I'm gonna end up this explanation on another type of, you know, format because I don't want to bother him right now. <sighs> so, I guess he knows something's wrong. I guess he knows there's, uh, you know, a cat missing and he's just purring and holding my hand so I don't go away. He might be afraid that I might disappear too. Or perhaps he's sensing that I have the smell of his brother in my hands. Anyhow. Okay, so actually they like to, you know, cuddle up with each other a lot. That was something they were always doing. You know, Loki is the one who's completely brown. Um, he... Uh, up to the standards of what he was and the amount of inbreeding that must have had um, the bet told us that it was extremely rare that these animals get to live so long he was uh, you know from 2013 so that means 2022 uh, that's you know uh, a long time for not for me not for what I used to have my cats because you know my cats often just died at 16 the most recent ones uh, but often they just you know trail off up to 19 years at release between 18 and 19 but for him for the type of heavy inbreeding um, you know that he had he was a competition cat and you know he's um, I didn't I never registered I, I should I could have you know um, made a register for him uh, but I decided to give him a life as a loving pet and not as a cat for shows so um, yeah um, you know that starts when you're in the business of pets, you understand some things, perhaps, 
a lot better than other people and you know that makes you sound heartless and it's not that you don't care about your pets it's just that priorities you know if your most loved important person gets hit by a car your priority should not be cry at their side your priority should be you know getting an ambulance as fast as possible and if the ambulance is not able to get there in time just uh, try to stabilize him or just get him into a car and drive him to the hospital yourself and um, you know that that's the type of person I am you know it's like reason always overcome feelings I don't I, I've been trained to do not have you know um, I don't have permission to have feelings toward these things because when you work with pets and when animals long enough, you know, everything is raised against time. Here it was sleeping under the covers the last winter, you know, um, in my room. So um, it was a uh, short hard hair oriental cat, green eyes competition grade which means a lot of inbreeding down there I just choose him because I liked him you know I I even sanitize him so I wasn't going to make him a reproductor but well you know I guess in reptiles as much as in cats that's the way things are the more pure the breed is the more exquisite the features are the more sick is the animal and um, the other one, the, the one that's just trying to hug my arm and I was able to, you know, exchange my arm for a leg right now, um, it was delivered to us for free, actually, because um, the breeder, um, this was the same breeder, um, it was a little bit younger, it is a little bit younger, but uh, it didn't want anybody to know because it considered, you know, Pookie Fee to be a defective cat, whatever that means for cat standards. Um, and, uh, you know, he was, in, he was just eating chicken, raw, raw chicken or boiling chicken, not, you know, um, this uh, cat food, which we purchase, you know, even if we need to eat uh, boiled bones, it doesn't matter. Uh, I make sure they have the best food possible, but besides that, you know, about inbreeding, there's not much you can do. It happens to reptiles, it happens to cats, and I don't know how much Pookie is going to live now, um, but I hope it's a little bit more, you know, it's, it's sad overall. It's always sad when a pet's gone, but... Um, you know, I don't, I don't have, you know, I might sound heartless, I'm not, I assure you I'm not, but I just, you know, I don't, I don't have the permission or the time, you know, my mom is always a wreck, she's pure heart, she's nothing about planning, nothing about nothing, and my dad, you know, is the guy that continuously complains about the animals and keeps saying I hope they were dead I hope they just die I hope we're go I'm going to just kick them out of the out of the bedroom I'm gonna explode their kidneys on the door and then when the actual cat just kind of dies uh, is the first one to take pictures you know over dramatize everything don't do shack shit to help anybody so it only left me. I am the one who has to dig the grave. I am the one who has to take the cat and, you know, um, cover it with dirt. Because, you know, that's the cycle. And it's sad that I don't have permission to cry over my own cat. But hey, <laughs> you know, what doesn't kill you just makes you stronger or stranger whatever you choose so um i made sure that you know this was a big cat with you know long legs the longest tail ever that i've seen on a cat um you know, it was very uh imported kind of you know quality 
it was you know uh, very 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 uh up to standards cut not like you know boogie fee which was you know discarded and you know the breather told me don't take pictures and say it was from my breather because you know everybody's going to be mad everybody's going to say that the quality of our cats is not up to stand it's not i said like you're giving me this cat for free what does it matter if i take pictures or not and i remember that about Loki, the one who just passed away, um, the breeder just contacted me around, I don't know, a year after I adopted him and said, um, if the cat died, it's all right. You can tell me, uh, you know, and I say, why do you assume that the cat is dead? Of course, it's not dead. And I had to, you know, take pictures and send the pictures to this person. And, and so why, why are you assuming he's dead? How does that work? And she was like, oh, yeah, because I just deliver a cat around, around your block to another person and the cat just ran off and just jump into the elevator pit. And I don't know how people do that to their animals. I just, I, I don't know. I just, I just, I can't comprehend that. So, um. Yeah, I can't comprehend it, but apparently it's a thing. And um, you know, when when you know years passed, and I felt obliged, I didn't want to, you know, show off my cat and say, "Look at the cat that I have. Look at how exquisite he is." Because for me, it wasn't a thing. It was, you know, a living creature, and I didn't, you know, there's people that get dogs, cats, reptiles, just to be able to say, look at what I have, not look at who is living my life with me. And I think that's pathetic. And I'm not that type of person. So um, whenever I took pictures, it was, you know, because it was a cute moment or because I wanted to save those pictures for myself. I wasn't advertising my cat because it was you know, completely pure breed. Um, I I love him the way he was, and and you know, watching him every single day of my life that was enough for me. I, I didn't have to, you know, go around making pictures so everybody will be envious of how good quality my cat was. It's not, it's not a goddamn pair of shoes for that matter. You know, it's a cat. So um. I only have two cats left, and I'm not planning into adopting anyone anytime soon, you know. Um, but um, you know, it's it's kind of sad how how these animals get treated as if they are merchandise. And I, I realize that I do the exact same thing to reptiles, but you know, with reptiles, it's kind of a little bit different most of the times as long as you provide for the animal the animal is not going to you know get attached to either a human being or another one there are very few cases and very few and there are technically not reptiles but i've seen tortoise yes turtles tortoise i don't know how you want to call them that those ones do suffer separation but we're talking about animals that live 50 years. So if after 40 years you just take the partner that was alongside the other one and just sell them or just, you know, passed away or something happens, the one remaining, it, it just, you, you run with the risk that it stops eating. It just, you know, gives up. It, it doesn't have any idea what's going on you know cats in that matter are a lot more you know conscious that something is is wrong that something is not right and uh like i said you know like i i just buried with these same hands his kind of brother cousin i don't know um and he was just you know trying to cuddle up with my arm and I don't know if he's just sad or if he just, you know, smells the other cat. Uh, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of sad for all of us, I guess. Um, 
you might be asking yourself, why did he die? Well, the official gas was um, um, liquid on his lungs. You know, like um, a week and a half ago, uh, he had an episode and um, he couldn't breathe. He was just struggling to breathe and, you know, we just, it was very late uh, uh, Sunday, I guess. And um, we couldn't contact anyone to see him right away. So we had to wait for Monday and to see if the God will make it alive, you know. So um, I already knew the God had asthma because that is a common disease that these kind of cats have. But it's also exacerbated by the fact that my father is a fucking son of a bitch and it will smoke on the cat face just for fun. So um, here you have another reason why I hate my dad. And, you know, you can't argue me with that. You can't say that he was a misunderstood child and therefore he has the right to kill every single person, animal or goddamn thing that crossed his path because he wasn't understood when he was little. Fuck him. I was never understood and I don't go around being a dick. You know, he knew the cat had asthma and he smoked on his face for years, you know, because I had to sleep. I had to sleep at some point, you know, in my life. Humans do sleep. And um, whenever he had a chance, he find it funny to just blow the smoke on the cat's face. And, you know, that makes all the more insulting than while I'm, you know, digging a grave with my bare hands. He's just, you know, running around, giving opinions about how bad I am doing it. You know, you should be this, you should be doing that. And then crying and, you know, sending WhatsApp messages sounding like he's devastated when we all know he's not because he's the only protagonist of his own story. And, um, you know, sometimes with, when somebody dies and not just a cat, anybody, anything dies, you're not the main character. And my dad just can't process that, you know. Everything needs to be about him. So, um, yeah, kind of a dick. So, um... The inbreeding didn't make the cat any favors to be this extreme oriental pure blood didn't make him any favors. It was extremely well taken care of as much as I could. The doctors just agreed that this uh, you know this particular kind of cats oftenly don't live that long it's, it was just you know the the beds just told me you know it's amazing that you you read, you know, eight, nine years with these reads. They don't, they, they often die at five years, sometimes less, three years, four years, and they die. It's, it's very remarkable that you just keep this cat alive for so long in good conditions, you know, in, in the best ones that I could. Um, so that does little to comfort me, I guess. But just, you know, knowing that perhaps if anyone else would have got in him, he would have just gone away so much sooner. It just kind of, you know, I did my best. There is a reason why animals just, you know, live so long when I'm around. And it's because I don't take decisions based on what I want. And I don't take decisions based on my heart. I need to have a cool level head to deal with things and whenever the animal passed away perhaps a couple days later i'll have you know the time and the permission to grieve for a short period of time but i can't allow myself to be hysterical when the animal needs me you know i need to take the best choices for the animal so right there and there when you know the second bed saw it and said you know it's liquid on the lungs there's nothing you can do about that because we don't know what is causing them. The liquid is, you know, a symptom of something worse. Uh, it's not 
you know, the cause of the issue. Yes, it's going to die because it can't breathe, because it's not getting air inside the lungs, because the lungs has, you know, fluid. And we could put him down uh, with anesthesia and we could just pinch his lungs and drain whatever liquid is there, but just a couple, if we don't find whatever's wrong with the cat, a couple hours in, the cat is going to have the lungs filled with liquid again. And we don't know if it's even going to be able to go through the anesthetic because we have to put him completely down. This cannot be done locally. You know, the cat's going to fight back. It's going to be in extreme stress. It's a very old cat for his breed. Um, you know, and the advice, they say, well, you know, there are treatments, you can't try them, but they will not assure you that the cat's going to survive. In fact, there is more likely that you will end up killing the cat in pain during a procedure than just, you know, just putting him down like that. So they offer us, you know, uh, to put him down a week ago. And, uh, you know, I don't believe in putting down animals because I've seen animals completely emaciated that somehow just managed to pick themselves up and live another year or two. So for them, you know, for the, with a good quality of life, with a decent one at very least, and not in constant pain. So um, I'm not an advocate for killing animals. You know, I know many people in the US, it's just like, oh, the dog is too old. Let's just put it down. No, God damn it. Do you love your dog? Just don't kill him. Just let him die whenever. Imagine if you will reach a certain age, you reach your 80s, and suddenly your family says, you know, grandpa is just too old. We should put him down. So, you know, it's just like the concept. I wouldn't do that to a human. I wouldn't do that to an animal. And that's it. You know, it is more possible for me to pull the trigger on a human than to pull the trigger on my own pets. So I don't see why people do that. I, of course, you know, even if the odds are against the, this, this creature, whatever it is, there is always a chance that you're going to have a couple more years. And, you know, the ironic part was that we declined, you know, to euthanize the cat right there. And uh, we brought him back here home. And uh, we just, you know, he he was started to look better. He started eating again, drinking water, you know, going to the bathroom. Um, it wasn't breathing all that good, but it started to breathe a lot better. It was, you know, making real improvement and um and um i want to kill him god damn it i want to kill him uh less than two days ago you know like a day and a half the cat was you know with my dad and uh, my mom has this strict Oh, it's so late, I gotta go to sleep. And sometimes the cat just, you know, like to hang out around, you know, the living room with my dad watching movies. And my dad starts smoking there. And, you know, I realized because I have a very strong sense of smell. And I went there and I just, I just power him with insults because, you know, what the fuck am I going to do? Uh, because the cat was there. And after that, the cat, you know, I took the cat, I took it to another room, but the damage apparently was done. Um, the cat started having problems breathing. It got worse yesterday. And um, he wasn't able to even take a single sip of air by today at... Uh, you know, um, mid-afternoon. That means like, you know, a couple hours ago when he passed away. Knowing what I know about animals, I'm guessing that, it, you know, the cause of my cat's asthma was my dad smoking on him. And um, he's a son of a bitch for it. 
But the fact that he knew the cat was dying, it was very delicate. He was just trying to recover. It was starting to eat. It was starting to drink water, go poop, go pee. It was starting, you know, to sleep with my mom. It was starting to, you know, be better. And the guy just, just gave a fuck. Give a complete fuck about it. And he just said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to smoke on his face again. A week after, they told us to put it down. And in that week, he did remarkable, and I do mean remarkable, recovery for his condition. What killed him was my dad. No liquid in the lungs. That was just a coincidence, you know, a, a cause and, and consequence of, of the behavior of my asshole of a father. So that is what I get so upset when people just says, oh, I like to play the devil's advocate and I'm going to speak on behalf of my... Uh, you know what? Just don't dare to speak good about my father. He's a piece of shit. He deserves to die. And if there is a hell, I hope he has every single fucking goddamn tickets to go there. And if possible, remain there. Because if he reincarnates, he's going to keep fucking up people's lives, no matter where, no matter how. So, um, well, that was the story of my cat. He was a very well-loved cat. We, you know, we fed him uh, Russell Cannon, and when we couldn't afford that anymore, we changed to IAMS, which is, you know, another brand that is like Russell Cannon. It, it doesn't pay as much as in publicity, but it's the same quality of food, you know, it's very good food. Um, so we saw feeding them IAMS, and, um, you know, we had to, with my mom, just, just get the. <laughs> get the little you know the, the little coins just to to get enough to to get the bag of cat food and i guess we still do that and the well the only thing that my dad ever did was just fuck things up and just not being accountable for it you know he's 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 unforgivable he's beyond forgiveness not because he killed the cat he's he was beyond forgiveness prior, but I'm trying to hope that by showing the devastation of his actions, the ones he never is responsible, if you ask him, you are able to see for yourself that he does not deserve anyone advocating for him. He doesn't deserve to be alive for all that matters to me. And, um, you know, every time I say how abusive and son of a bitch he is, everybody just tell me, oh, well, but he might have it rough when he was a kid. He might have his reasons. No, you know what? We all have reasons to be dicks if we look hard enough. Some of us, like me, we don't even have to look hard enough to be dicks. You know, every single reason to be an absolute dick and I don't mean just, you know, uh, disrespecting some minority. I mean in real dicks, as in I'm going to kill my pet dick just because I enjoy it. And then I'm going to make when the pet dies everything about me and my pain, even when I don't feel pain because I literally was the one who caused his dead. That's kind of, you know. And I've seen my dad just tossing cats against the walls since I have memory. Since we had cats, which, you know, for the most part, there was already a cat at, at home when I was born. So for all that matters all my life, I already had one or two cats or three cats uh, around. So, um, and he was absolutely nonchalant about kicking them in the kidneys uh, smashing them against the door, stepping on them and killing them, and then blaming the dog. So, um, yeah. Next time you think about advocating for that asshole, just remember, don't. 
because people like that just don't deserve anybody taking care of their rights, feelings, or advocating. <laughs> like, who fucking cares? You know? Who fucking cares? And, um, yeah, I just, right now, just spooky fee, which is the, you know, the cat that wouldn't let go of my arm, just fall asleep uh, under the covers with me. And, uh, I, I, I am kind of hear how my mom is just, you know, with 72 years old, trying to lift a huge, um, because, you know, obviously the cat, when he was about to die, he peed himself, which is something normally happens to everybody. If you wonder if it's going to happen to you, yes, it will. The moment you die, you pee yourself. It's just a fact. Um... Sometimes you even shit yourself. It's another fact. In this case, he didn't shit himself. He just, you know, uh, pee. Uh, so now my mom, with 72 years old, is washing by hand a huge cover. You know what my dad is doing right now? Instead of helping my mom? He's in the living room. You know, he's in the living room sending WhatsApp messages to everybody who hear him about how sad he is. And you know what I'm doing? I'm here recording this because I just took so many medication for, you know, my pain. Because, you know, I had to put myself, I'm 40 years old, I have to be on my four legs digging a hole on the earth to bury my cat. And I wasn't good yesterday, you know. I had sore joints and pain all over yesterday. So imagine where is my body right now. So I can't go help my, my mom and my dad should be there trying to help her. And you know what? He's just, he doesn't give a crap. He just, he, the only people important for that bastard is his, himself. So um, anyhow, like I was saying... Uh, the only thing, while well, I think that this cat, Pookie Fee, which is, you know, like I said, from, from the same breeder, and um, they told us not to take a single picture, not to ever mention that this cat was from them. The only reason why I actually believe it's going to perhaps do, you know, a little bit longer, it's because this cat, it was you know, defective, as the breeder said. It was not up to standards. So that means that um, perhaps some of his DNA, some of his genes were not as refined as Loki were and that will give him a better chance at not getting sick. You know, if you notice his head, his nose is not just that straight it has a little bending and um well that the fact that he's a defective cat might give him a better health in the long run so i hope you know because for for readers the set when they tell you that this is not good enough it's oftenly not because you know it's the cat is sick as you can tell, you know, it's not a sick animal. The, the fact is that they're not able to, you know, advertise their breeding company or uh, just use them to breed more because, you know, something is not right with the animal per se. So, anyhow, I'm going to end up the video and um, Loki... Like, you know, the real Loki on Marvel Cinematic Universe um, just, you know, died and uh, left a brother behind. So I'm going to open the door for uh, Pookie. I guess he wants to use the bathroom now. That will be all for now. Goodbye, folks.